Hello, .NET Nuclear YouTube subscribers and Twitter followers. It's me, Scott Wilkinson, again, and I have a real treat for you this time. This is another compressed teaching of a session I did at the Southern Fried DNN Conference in Charlotte. This was a, a presentation I did on the Saturday, which was the day of DNN event. This session is titled Rich Client Module Development, which is an advanced look at .NET Nuke development where we forego the chains of typical .NET Web Forms programming and venture into a new world of modern web frameworks like HTML5 Canvas, Knockout JS, and .NET Nuke Framework Services, and we're going to create a truly dynamic user experience with these technologies. And in the process, I will give you a really nice code project for a charting module that you can use and enhance for your business. Here's a quick shot of me at the conference for those of you who have never met me or seen me. And by the way, these conferences are such a blast and I encourage everyone to come out to the next one, which is going to be later in the year in October in um, Palm Beach, Florida. All right, let me show you the capabilities of this charting module I built as a demonstration for this presentation. I call the module Dynamic Visualizer. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so when the chart, when the page first loads, the chart renders, and there are charting options at the top. There's a chart data set selector in the middle and the chart is at the bottom. Notice I can change any of the chart settings and the chart will dynamically re-render the chart. I can change the chart type from bar to line to pie. I can, add, I can change or edit the title of the chart. I can also change the direction of the axis. Of the axis. In addition, I can change the chart data and the chart will also redraw itself. So all these different events happen and they happen without a single page postback event happening. Everything that's every event that's that's being triggered is completely done by either knockout bindings or jQuery. So before I show you how this actually works, I want to give you a little background of the .NET Nuke module architecture and how this module is a new evolution of that architecture. Here is a traditional model for module development in .NET Nuke. For those of you who saw my, um, my DNN 7 complete course, which is the video I put out uh, just about a week ago, uh, this is be very familiar to you. You have a ASP.NET user control that is our view uh, that the user interacts with. Your code events in the user er, is in the user controls code behind class. You, your event usually calls the data layer to retrieve or update data, and you are either sending the data layer a model object. Um, to, for, for the data later to store it, or you're retrieving that model to display it on your page. The new architecture that I'm advocating looks a little more complicated, but has some big advantages. The first, which is not really relevant to this module particularly, is the use of the model view presenter pattern uh, to handle most of the view logic outside of the user control, thereby making it possible to do unit testing or test-driven development. Also, this diagram shows that the notion of our data layer sharing the same uh, model data with our view and with our services layer. So that's the second big uh, advantage is the ability for our, uh, our view, our, our JavaScript, our front end, to interact directly with our services layer, which, which interacts um, the same as our presenter with our data layer to, uh, to get back our model data. So, and in, in, in this case, our services layer uh, is directly in the front end, of course, and it's using jQuery Ajax. 
So therefore, the technology used in this module to accomplish um, all these features is the following. DNN Services Framework, DAL2 Data Layer, JSON, jQuery AJAX, J, the J, a jQuery Visualize plugin, which is a, a plugin that I found that, um, that uses HTML5 Canvas, and Knockout JS. Notice this involves very little server-side page composition, which is what typical .NET Web Forms and MVC developers are used to. So let's take a look at this uh, first part of our stack here, the DNN Services Framework and the JSON. To start out our module, I built a data layer and um, for our module using the DAL2, uh, the DAL2 uh, in DNN7. If if you haven't had a look at the DAL2 before, again check out my previous uh, Complete Course 101 DNN7 video that I put out last week. And in in the middle of that video, I have a a, a real a good deeper dive into how the DAL2 works. So after I put together the data layer to get my charting data, I built the service to give that data to my front end. So this is uh, done using the DNN services layer in, in .NET Nuke 7. I created a route using the iService route mapper interface in DNN and gave it the required parameters. The URL pattern generated by the framework is the following desktop modules, module name, API, controller name, action, chart ID, which gives us the URL uh, that you can see here um, to get at our charting data set by the, by the uh, chart ID. Now, if you guys are brand new to .NET New Services Framework, I also have a good article. Um, I think it's called Cascading Dropdowns. And um, I go over that a little more in depth. Plus, I th also um, on the on my website on this blog page, I'll have a couple other links to some some good articles on DNN framework service development. So, what the result is of that service is uh, is the following: It gives us JSON output that we're going to bind to our page. We have in this JSON, um, there's uh, the chart, uh, the default chart settings that, get, that are stored in the database, and the series data that is used by the charting component to actually draw the chart. So the way we get at this data is by way of using jQuery AJAX in our front end. I created a function called get chart data that I can call either when the page loads or when the uh, drop down list for, with the listing of, of chart type or chart data uh, sets uh, is changed. And so this is just a very simple get function. Um, the Ajax function um, will call our service um, or our our service anonymously and it'll call it asynchronously. If we get a good response, then um, the JSON data is sent into our uh, chart view model, which is which is our new um, knockout um, view view model for our our uh, module. Now that we're getting our data and we're newing up our our knockout view model, let's talk about knockout. And, and how it works in this in this module. Knockout JS is a big topic that I can't properly cover in this session, but um, just as an overview, Knockout JS is a framework, a JavaScript framework that saves us a lot of time when writing either jQuery or JavaScript code to handle DOM events when either populating or retrieving data from your DOM elements. When setting up our knockout view model, we create attributes of the model to bind to our elements. So for example here, I've created a, an attribute in the view model called title. And what I did was I created it as an observable attribute and I initialized it with the title of our that came from our chart data, which ultimately came from our, um, our, fr our DNN framework service. So then in my HTML, 
what I do is I bind it to one of my elements. In this case, it's a text box that um, that uh, is going to be the uh, that's bound to the observable attri title attribute in my knockout view model. So what what this does is it makes it such that the text box is populated initially, and then when changed, it automatically will trigger an event. Um, in in knockout and um, in addition to these observable attributes that you can you can both uh, find out when something's been changed and also notifies an element when when it's when the data has been changed uh, you can create custom functions and here I created a custom function called chart options or actually yeah uh, an attribute that calls a, a computed function um, to get the chart options and what this does is anytime any of my chart options change from the uh, all the observer attributes above um, a, the computed function runs and it puts together uh, the uh, a chart option uh, object that my jQuery chart component understands so in, in other words anytime any of the options are changed it recomputes that array of all the chart options um, and making it ready to pass on to the ch uh, chart component. The next thing we use Knockout for is it, not only does Knockout have the ability to bind uh, single attributes, but it, it, it can also bind observable arrays of items. Now here I created an observable array of the series data. This is not really useful for this demonstration per se because I'm not really um, using, um, I'm not, I'm, I don't really, I'm, I'm not really binding any edit functions, I guess, to, to these, um, to this data. It's just really being put, um, put into the chart. But, um, you know, in the future, if you ever decide to bind the series data to some input fields, this could, uh, allow users to dynamically even change the chart data on the page. But what I do use that uh, series data for is another feature of Knockout, which is uh, templating. So just a little background, the chart component that I use is a jQuery plugin called jQuery Visualize. The way it works is to take an, a, as input a regular HTML table, uh, and that's what you, it uses for the series data. Um, and then also, in addition, it takes um, the, uh, an array of chart options, which again, I, I told you before, we compute. You call the visualize function and it will turn the data, um, both the HTML table and the chart options, and it will turn it into an HTML5 canvas chart. Unfortunately, because that plugin expects the data to be in an HTML table, I must write the series data as a table on the page. So to do this, I use that feature of Knockout, which is templating, and that allows me to create HTML using the data in our view model dynamically. So you can see here, I have um, a T body in my, in my table, and again, I'm using that data bind statement, and I'm calling a template, which is a JavaScript function that I have below that. Uh, which describes how to apply the data that's in my observable array into HTML and build out the rows in that T body. I can also set up custom handler events that fire when my template changes or my data changes. This is how I'm able to call the plugin to re-render the chart whenever either the series data or the chart options change. And you can see here, I call that uh, custom handler visualize. And what it does is every time um, anything changes, it's going to call the, uh, the visualize plugin, jQuery plugin. And that's what, that's what causes the chart to re-render. Well, that about wraps up this lesson on rich client module development, but I'm sure you still have many questions. You can go to dotnetnuclear.com and find this corresponding blog article that goes with this video. You can download the slideshow, the SQL data script, and the complete 
code project for this module. If you have any questions, please post comments on that blog article or go to my support uh, section and, and post um, some comments there. Uh, also, if you're wondering why the structure of the project looks a little different, it's because I built it using my new MVP module development template for DNN7. Um, so you can also get this template for use on your projects by going to my website. Now once again, I want to thank the organizers and sponsors for the March 2013 um, Southern Fried DNN Conference. Actually, sorry, that's April 2013 Southern Fried DNN Conference in Charlotte. It was a blast. Everybody I talked to, whether a presenter or an attender, got a lot out of it. Be sure to follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my YouTube channel to get updated whenever I release any new training or products. If, if you get any real benefit from any one of my training items, please contribute $5 using the banner at the bottom of the page. This is uh, kind of like buying me a beer for your appreciation, and, and it keeps me motivated to put out more great content. Well, thanks for watching, and I look forward to talking at you next time.